I'm Joyce Hornady. You might say accuracy is my business. I make bullets. You are listening to the Hornady Podcast. Thanks for joining us and enjoy the show. Hello, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to the Hornady Podcast. I'm your host, Seth Swerzik, and today, Preston Lentfer from the marketing team joins me in the studio. Preston, thanks for coming on the podcast. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having the idea to to have Jaden on and walk through his, his hunting rifle setup or just specific builds in general. We got a lot of a lot of comments about it, positive, and, and people want to see and hear more, so here we are. Yeah, which... I kind of speculated that was going to happen, especially with Jaden, because Jaden has become Hornady Podcast famous, whatever level of notoriety that gets you. Just but, above local level. Yeah, so <laughs> he uh, uh, definitely, people want to know more about his selections, and so we that's why we obviously used him for the test show, but you handle a large majority of podcast at Hornady.com. Yeah. You handle, you handle almost all of the YouTube comments, uh, not so much on social media other than YouTube and that podcast at Hornady.com. We encourage all of our listeners to interact with us through those formats and all the other social media stuff, but you saw firsthand the amount of emails coming in, the amount of comments on that first YouTube or, uh, excuse me, that first podcast on YouTube with Jaden going over his rifle setup. And it was, uh, I don't want to say overwhelming, but it was, it was substantial compared to normal traffic that we see yeah absolutely and and there's you know constructive criticism on there as well so we've i've i've even gone a little bit deeper than you guys went with Jaden's as far as like getting weights i'm not going to calculate recoil or anything like that yeah but we've got i've got a weight on this rifle and and i can't wait to talk about this one this one this one's pretty cool this one's cool and i feel like i had a, a, a hand well this was your stock at one point and and that barrel at one point yeah uh so before we get into the technicalities of the rifle, I think it's a good idea to start broad level. Tell us what this rifle's chambered in and what it's used for, and maybe what bullet you're shooting, what kind of velocities you're seeing, and then we'll get into the specifics. Sure. And I do want to let folks know before we really dive in here, I saw some of your comments. Yes, we are going to get some more budget-minded builds in there. The, I mean, I'm not going to say this is as expensive as it gets. But this is like my one and done. Uh, there's no up, there's no upgrading this in my opinion. Yeah, for for my use. So we are going to do some more budget friendly builds. We might have Judd bring in his Ruger American Predator. Hey, uh, that is one is kind of tricked out. Um, it is tricked out. Let's yeah. not fail to mention. Just laid down an antelope. Yeah. Yep. Nice nice goat. Yep. So Judd Judd's got antelope meat. I'm a little bit jealous about that. Yeah. Uh, tasty. I'm going to go on record and say it right here. Let's just get the algorithm in the comments going. Antelope is better tasting than elk. Yeah. Touch blue, make it true every day, twice on Sunday. Full agreeance with you. Uh, I would like to hear the comment section on that one because we've already <laughs> we've, opened We've started that a lot of stuff with that before. I do want to make a point that we had some comments, some emails come in that we are trying to push a one gun solution for everything. And that uh, couldn't no. <laughs> be we we like to have tools that yeah. do several jobs and these are expensive tools we want to make sure they do as many jobs as possible but you don't have just this you've got a stable full of other barrels and cartridges and rifle setups to do a lot of different jobs so although this might appear like we're really pushing one cartridge to rule them all no way no way so mm -mm. i have i have a i have a desk full of barrels yeah. that i could put on here yeah a barrel full of barrels essentially with that in mind, let's talk about what this rifle's purpose is. Again, it's one rifle to do many jobs, but not all the jobs. And then what's it's chambered in, what kind of bullet you're shooting, and what velocity. Sure. Uh, this is a 6.5 PRC. Um, this rifle is meant for mule deer on down. Okay. You know, this is my Nebraska hunting gun. This would be a Western hunting gun as well. But uh, when I have the opportunity at mule deer down to antelope this is this is the rifle that i'm i'm going to use this is the go-to you got it in the safe it's dialed in you get a deer hunt you get an antelope hunt you can reach in and you know this I one's can ready grab to go. it i've got uh this one i have a four doff profile for on my phone and then i also have it on my four doff kestrel like mm -hmm. it, that one will never get de deleted because this one is just ready to go awesome um, and i'm just shooting factory uh 
6.5 PRC Precision Hunter with the 143 ELDX mm. out of it. I just, out of curiosity, I went and chronoed an, a new lot this morning, and this just about 26.90 on the okay. average. Um, some people might say, oh, wow, that's small that are listening, not watching, but this is an 18-inch barrel. Yeah, and we'll get more on that short barrel later. So basically, you're doing Creed more velocity, but from a much shorter package. Yeah, and that that's what I wanted because I really enjoy hunting suppressed so of course yeah uh, the suppressor adds length i'm not gonna say i'll never hunt with a muzzle break again but yeah no i don't i don't i don't really want to do that so so you're shooting the 143 eldx for antelope deer and all those animals that i mean an outstanding bullet have you shot the 130 cx out of it not out of this particular one uh, but on that antelope hunt that we yeah. went on and chronicled, yeah. that was a 6.5 PRC with a 130CX. So I'm going to ask this just for the listener's sake. You said this is for your deer on down on the plains, prairie, and in the mountains. Would you shoot an elk with it? Maybe with that 130CX? Yeah. Absolutely. I'd shoot one with 143. Yeah. I got no qualms with that either. Excellent. Um, when we went on that elk hunt last year, this was the backup gun. Right. Yep. So. Nice yeah, little no, setup. No problems with that at all. All right. So we've got a gun. But again, not to use the overused golf analogy, golfer has more than one club. Yeah. They have 14 clubs. 14? Do hockey players have extra clubs too? Well, they have extra sticks, yeah. but they break them often. Okay. Only Golfers really only break clubs if they get really mad. Yeah. And then they regret it later. I've never broken a club, but I've also really never golfed seriously. Yeah. Probably for the better. The Hornady Click Adjust Bullet Seating Micrometer. Precisely set bullet seating depth with click adjust in one thousandths of an inch increments and easy to read graduations. It's a quick and easy way to achieve bench rest accuracy and consistency with tactile clicks just like a click adjust scope turret. Easily installed on Hornady custom or match grade seating dies. Take your reloading game to the next level with the Hornady Click Adjust Bullet Seating Micrometer. All right, back to more important things. This firearm, outstanding example of what a truly custom rifle can be set up for, for you and for your specific needs. Just like with Jaden's episode, I want to start at the heart of this rifle. And to me, the heart of a rifle is the action. What do you got here? Uh, this is a Bighorn Origin, uh, excuse me, or Zermatt Origin uh, out of Bennett, Nebraska. Yep, so hometown, hometown team. team. Yep. Um, and there are a lot of good short actions out there. Don't get me wrong. I really like this one. Um, it's got the interchangeable bolt head. So this can be a 223, a 6.5 Creedmoor, a 308, a 243, up to a 300 WSM if a guy really wanted to. Very versatile. So absolutely. Six arc. I forgot that, you know, it can take four different bolt heads. Mm -hmm. So if, if I wanted to, this, this could do it all. Um, I choose on my rifles the helical diamond, diamond diamond helical or helical diamond bolt knob yep really a big fan and it should go without saying this rifle is empty this magazine is empty there's no ammunition nearby of course. uh but even for hunting it, it's a little big but i would i would use this one on like a prs rifle yeah but man i'm just so used to it it's not so gaudy and large that it's in the way and it's not so small with a gloved hand or when it's cold mm -hmm that you can't really get good purchase and on it. It's got good mm -hmm. tactile feel to yep. it. So, yeah, the glove thing is is definitely something that weighs on me. Um, this one is set up with the Hunt's recoil or Hunt's long range recoil lug. Yeah, okay. So this barrel has actually been cut for a TL3 action. and Not essentially, an origin action. Right. Essentially what this recoil lug does, because the origin and the Zermatt TL3 and a this is, these are not advertisements. We love everybody, but we're just telling you what this rifle is. It's set up for, like I think, a 250 recoil lug, and this is milled down to 150 so that it will accept and headspace with TL3 prefits. Perfect. Because so the we, lab guns are TL3. I mean, it's, just, it's almost like a I've common got, yeah. language around here. Within our office, we use a lot of barrels, uh, a lot of actions, a lot of different action manufacturers, but there's a lot of us that are running those Zermatt arms actions, and TL3 just seems to be the universal. So that's neat that you were able to set the origin up to still use those same TL3 barrels. Yep. Speaking of barrel, we got a handsome barrel right here, 6.5 PRC. You mentioned 18 inches. What's the specs on that barrel? Uh, it's is a proof research Sendero Contour 8-twist, 18-inch carbon fiber barrel. 
there's i mean there's really not a whole lot to it this is not a pre-fit you know why i did have to get this cut because they don't offer it in in that short of a length Mm -hmm. pre-fit um you can't see it but on the other side maybe we'll get a photo and put it up here i had my main man miles uh laser engrave uh six five prc into it because he's got a laser engraver and right. he, he likes to do that kind of stuff but uh a lot of times you'll see these silver left you know, stainless, just left yeah. stainless i like the rust-oleum silver can yeah enamel yeah. or i, I, I don't know what it is enamel. but that gives it just a little bit of a sheen and if it gets dinged up like it did here or gets worse just tape it up and spray it again yep that's simple and it knocks down the glare, like you said. It does look pretty handsome. I love the short barrel look with the carbon fiber, and you're getting right about 2,700 feet per second out of it. Uh, moving to the muzzle end, well, before we get there. I will there, say, with hand loads, I, I, just, I don't want to use hand loads with this. I don't want to hand load for this particular rifle. I just want to grab out of my case of ammunition and go. Yep. Um, I can get higher velocity underneath pressure. Yeah. I really can um, with certain Level powders. Powder. Yeah. yeah. Reloader 26. Yep. Uh, Standard Sammy chamber. Nothing crazy there. Just your standard dimension 6.5 PRC. And then on the muzzle end, uh, we've got a couple things going on here. you got a suppressor, but also a suppressor adapter that I want to bring up. What are we looking at at the end there? Yeah, we've got a Thunder Beast Ultra 5 up front. Now, on the end of the muzzle, I have the Area 419 adapter. Yep, the Hellfire adapter system. Yes, so kind of once you go to that system... You're a little bit married to it, and I'm really okay with it. Thunder Beast makes a wonderful can. Uh, as far as their muzzle brake CB mount, mm-hmm. I'd rather not peel crust washers, shim yeah, washers, shims. and cut myself anymore. So uh, everything I have is Area 419. Yep, and that's nice. You put uh, uh, basically a spud or an adapter on every barrel. And then for every muzzle device you have, you just put an adapter yeah. in the muzzle and device. And I suppose we can, we can take this off and show them. But this is righty loosey, lefty tidy yep. uh, for this system. Yep. Makes it easy on, off, and you can do multiple devices on multiple different yep. guns. So with this, with this adapter, I can put this on or I can put on the area of area four, 419, like two port break if I wanted to. If mm-hmm. I went somewhere, I couldn't use this. But this little adapter makes swapping stuff over so so wonderful so repeatable too yep yep if you've got multiple firearms multiple muzzle devices you want to run brakes suppressors you got multiple brands of suppressors i would highly recommend checking those guys out so that's the barreled action moving back to the to the front half of that action though what are you running for a trigger because that is always you ask 10 people you'll probably get 15 to 20 answers on what kind of trigger they like to run for hunting because this is a hunting rifle and what kind of pull weight you got that thing set to. This is a Trigger Tech uh, Independence version. Uh, primary. Primary. This is, I checked it this morning. This is set at two pounds exactly. But if you watch the retailers from time to time, they'll run sales on these because mm-hmm. um, they've got the American flag and it's normally around like 4th of July or something like that. They'll run sales on them and they're super economical. So crisp. The zero creep thing that, that, they've got going at trigger tech makes them feel a little bit lighter than they actually are and, sure. and this is I'm, I'm a primary guy on my hunting gun yep yep you can two pounds is is plenty light uh but also you know not so light that you're gonna jostle your rifle around and have that trigger uh drop the pin on you yeah i've, I've shot in some pretty uncomfortable positions with this and and i wouldn't want it a whole lot heavier than two pounds yep also like we talked about, I don't, I don't want it lighter. I mean, this passes the drop test. This, this passes everything. So excellent. So you've got a barreled action purposefully set up for what you're trying to do with it. And you dropped it in to a really good looking stock. What kind of stock do you have on this thing? I don't know if I want to call it a classic. I mean, I feel like it's it, the, the classic. Well, within the last few years, there's been so many newcomers on the market and just some outstanding stocks and chassis systems are so comfortable. I'm going to call this kind of the OG non-traditional type hunting stock as far as the precision marksman goes. Yeah, right there, we're probably with McMillan starting at the same point yeah. as well, but I feel like this one, 32 ounces if I'm not mistaken, yep. but this is a Manners EH1. I think it's Gap Camo? This is, yeah, the Gap 
gap camo. Yep. Yeah. Sponge um, painted with the gap colors. So yeah, this is a carbon fiber shell. Um, I'm not entirely sure what's on the inside of it, but 32 ounces, so two pound stock. Yes, there are some lighter, but I, I don't know. Overall, if we want to get to that point, this rifle without the bipod weighs not, uh, 8.8 pounds. Yeah. And at some point you can make a rifle too light Yeah, where it's, it's becoming unshootable. So you got a two pound stock. There's really not a lot of bells and whistles. I see you got some flush cups. Yeah. Flush cups on both sides. Mm -hmm. Um, I run the sling on this side because of the bolt handle here, of sure. course. Um, but I've got the Hornady sling outfitted with QD flush cups. The, the flush cups, and this is a little important that some people overlook. There's some that have stops in them. So mm -hmm. like anti-rotation, these have those. You don't want your stocks or your, your slings swivel. swinging around and getting all uh, twisted and stuff like that. So I do, this does have the anti-rotation flush cups in it. Perfect. The Hornady Security Fireproof Keypad Safe. With a heavy duty 16 gauge steel body, extra thick 8 gauge steel door, and four 1 inch diameter locking lugs, the Fireproof Safe achieves a fire rating of 30 minutes for up to 1400 degrees Fahrenheit. Both the interior and adjustable shelf are covered in a protective carpet that offers flexible storage configurations while safeguarding valuables from damage. The Fireproof Keypad Safe from Hornady Security. But yeah, I've, I've added some T-nuts, obviously, because on the front, mm -hmm. I've got, you know, some of my rifles, I have pic Picatinny rails up front and with Arca rail up back. This one, I just, I full don't know, just Arca. decided to go full Arca. So that's, and, what, a 12 or 13-inch rail? Yeah, and that's actually the skeletonized one. The lightweight version? I, I think what I did here, this was their M-Lock version, Area 419 Arca rail, and... I got done with what I was using it for on a gas gun, and I had our main man, Mike Whitey, who's been on the podcast many times, mill off the M-lock yep. portion of it and just make it flat. it flat. And so I went ahead and threw in some T-nuts and uh, fastened it that way. That way it's a little bit more, it's a little bit lighter. It's aluminum to begin with, mm -hmm. right? So it's light to begin with, but skeletonized, and it happens to fit the fore end of this pretty darn well. I would say perfectly. Now, walk the listener through why you would want a full-length Arca rail on a hunting rifle. Yeah, for, so I used to do a lot of PRS-style shooting, NRL hunter stuff. I don't do a whole lot of it anymore, but enough that most of my bipods anymore have Arca clamps on them. Okay. So up front, I got no, I've got no problem, because I've got two Atlas bipods like this, one with, with Picatinny that right now is living on a 7 PRC, uh, which could also be a 300 PRC, Lots of things, and we'll get maybe we'll get to that one too if you want to see it. Um, but I've also got this Atlas Arca rail well, that's got the 419 Arca clamp mm -hmm. on there. So I've got both, and on this one, it this the Arca rail just fits so well on the fore end that I decided let's just use this bipod. Uh, I have do have extensions for it, I probably should have brought those. I have six extensions for it as well as the. Spike feet. Real spike feet. feet. Yep. I was going to say really pointy, but spikes better. Yeah. Uh, and you like that rail coming almost all the way back to your magazine well. Right. Uh, and what's the purpose of running it all the way back? So two twofold on this one. Number one, if I need to shoot off of a tripod, which is honestly what I do most of, of my shooting with with this one, is I can put the tr clamp it into the tripod right here, and it's pretty darn balanced. Aha. Uh -huh. Yeah, I mean the the it could come back a little bit further, but it it's really inconsequential. I can I can I feel pretty comfortable shooting off of it. I wish I had the tripod a little bit to show them as well, but they've just become so prevalent in western or I, I shot my deer in Nebraska, uh, yeah. eastern Nebraska off of a tripod last year too. So yeah, I, I I would say obviously the western hunting, but uh, I, I saw a map where they called the the area of like east of Casper to about Kearney, Nebraska, they called that the frontier west or okay. the prairie west. A tripod is a staple if you're hunting out there, in my opinion. And then everything west of there, of course, as well. And then I started using them everywhere. They're they're handy in a box blind. They're handy when you're hunting the flat. You're handy in the timber. I mean, well, just even in like an open cornfield that's been cut, right? Mm -hmm. That's still got stocks, yay high, 
and there's just a little bit of a roll yeah. and you need to get over the corn stalks. It's just so handy where a bipod sometimes can't get over things. The yeah. tripod can. More often than not, not yeah. getting over those things. So you run the tripod, you can clamp in there and then get that balance point right where you want it. So that gun is basically rock solid it's supported. Just, yeah, it's sitting, at, at supporting itself. Mm -hmm. uh, the other twofold reason, the second reason I like this full length Arca is if I can shoot modified prone, off of something but i don't have the depth oh, to yeah. have this like, all the way yeah all the way out i can move it all the way back to here if i wanted to yeah and have those points of contact yeah. by using that arca clamp you can take that bipod clear back to your magazine well and i guess yeah let's show the viewers what that would look like for a modified prone and this is something that you would have obviously picked up prs nrl hunter yep. shooting over barrels and stuff like that because now you can support it back here with your and the end your, of the rock is right here right yep. so it, it makes perfect. perfect sense yep and i guess kind of a tertiary thing with this rail being full length it is flat it is dead flat and should you not be able to use a bipod or a tripod you could throw down your armageddon gear has that hunter bag which is phenomenal mm -hmm. the original um game changer the mini game changer with the get light pint bill, yep. the pint sized uh with the get light you can slap that down throw your rifle on top of it and you've got a really nice square platform uh to get good purchase on the bag with yeah I, uh, that's another thing i didn't think about because the eh1 four end is slightly it, rounded it's skinny you know mm -hmm. it's relatively skinny it's still flat on this forearm but it's skinny this way right so having a little bit extra purchase to ride that bag and really get into a nice path is 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 handy Yep. Well, it looks good. And we, we talked about the bipod. Let's get into the specifics on it. You mentioned this is an Atlas. Uh, the I think it's the BT-17, 6-9. Yeah. I think it's the Atlas Cal BT-17 yeah, or so, something like that. An important uh, note. Yeah. Anti-rotation legs. On yeah. Here. The V8 is the slightly cheaper version, uh, and the legs will spin on you. This one has a groove. Those legs are locked in. Yep. And and the 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 one thing I really like about this, when I run the extensions... If I get into a position where maybe I don't need the extensions, I can 45 these legs right here with the extensions, and that's about the same height as this, as if I didn't have them. Yeah, that's key. And this bipod obviously came out many years ago, yeah, well, well I, over a decade. Yeah. Uh, an outstanding product, and it's it looks like it's kind of bulky and heavy. Honestly, this thing's like 11 or 12 ounces. It's not particularly heavy. Yeah, I think with the clamp, she's hovering around a pound, I yeah. think. So not a particularly heavy bipod, and there might be lighter ones out there, but this one, pretty darn versatile. Yeah, the sky pods, mm -hmm. I, there's more range there, I, I I would consider it, but they're, the one that I have is just a little bit more heavy. Yeah, it's heavy, they're, they're longer, uh, very versatile there, the MDT sky pod, uh, I mean, that's a awesome tool to have in the toolbox you can get over a lot of different terrain there's a lot of different uh, leg manipulations you could do uh, but this atlas right here six to nine plus you've got the three or four inch extensions that you I, clip yeah. in i don't know how long they are with the spike feet it's definitely over got to be over four i'd say yep um but honestly a little inconsequential I, I use it for zeroing it and stuff like that but most of these shots are off of a tripod yep and if you hear nothing else in this, as far as gear goes, man, we've been harping on tripods and for, for good reason, because you've got the Arca on your rifle. Well, you also have Arca binos yep. and your spotting scope yep. and you can clamp in, you can sit comfortably, uh, just like last year coming up about 11 months ago or 13 months ago, rather you sit, sat down next to a fire while looking for elk. Now I'll be 11 months or ago. 11 months ago, but yeah. yeah. Uh, sat down next to a fire. It was snowy. You'd have your hands in your pockets and your head nestled into your binos, uh, scanning that big canyon for, for elk. And you can grid really conveniently with the tripod on there. And when it's time, throw the spotter in there. And if you need to, throw in the rifle. Yeah, and not, and not to get too far off tangent, but the spotting scope has an arc rail built into it. Yeah. Now the binos don't, but I, I do use the really right stuff. Uh, plastic clamp, clamp yep. um because it's a little bit lighter than the al aluminum one i think but yeah the spotting scope has arca built into it that goes right onto my clamp on my tripod yeah no extra equipment necessary just keeps it easy keeps it consistent moving on with that stock it's all dressed up but you got to have bottom metal and oh, there's a yeah. lot of options here because 
Some people like that hinged floor plate. Some people want, you know, different things. What would you select for this one? Uh, this is a Graybow M5. I think, I don't know if they have, do they have two different versions? Yeah, they have a Hunter and they yeah. have a standard so, M5. So this is the Hunter. Um, and the yeah, difference I being I don't flat. know what else to say about it besides it being flat and this little button right here compared to tabs on the side. Like I remember we, you talked about that a little bit in, in, in Jaden's, how when he moved over to the Hawkins, he didn't have those side release tab, tab yeah, for so, the magazine release so this one i mean you got to hit it pretty hard to get this magazine to come out so i would it, say it's not impossible because nothing's impossible but it's very difficult to accidentally drop your mag out of there yeah i mean it, that's like an on-purpose move where you have to put your booger hook inside the trigger guard and then firmly press a firmly relatively like, small button the, the spring in this is yeah they like, did a good job with that and what are you running for a magazine uh mdt uh, this is a short magnum. Uh, I believe it's a three round. I mm-hmm. can fit four in it, but okay. but that's just fine. And that's something that when the six five PRC first came out was a little bit confusing because short actions has have always been two point eight inches almost for millennia. Mm-hmm. But this is a short action, and and six five PRCs are two point nine five zero. So with this magazine. Sometimes there's a binder plate right in the at the beginning, uh, in the front of it rather. Sorry, and if you take that out, your these magazines are able to take just slightly over two point nine five zero. So a six five PRC in a short action, that's how you're able to do that in an M five style uh, of configuration. Yep, and we like that M five simply. Again, it's kind of like it's a standard. We not everyone in the industry, but a lot of people inside our company use this. And that's a big deal. You can swap mags and borrow mags if you need to. And there's somebody's always got an extra should you need it. Yep. Yep. And, th- and I would say that that's like the big two, right? B- there's BDL and then there's M5 and then a few others. But Yep. I'd say an honorable mention here, um, one that I've personally used on several builds, the HS Precision Bottom Metal. It it's on fits my long action. into a BDL inlet in your stock, and it's super convenient, incredibly well made right here in the U.S., just north of us, not far in South Dakota. Beautiful Rapid City. Yeah. So if you're looking for bottom metal, there's a bunch of good options out there. Again, HS, one that we use quite a bit, and this M5 style. Yeah. So, And maybe there's a, a magazine that fits a little bit more flush out there. I'm not entirely sure. There for, is for, for number ones for Magnums. I'm unsure. I know Andy Hawkins at a Hawkins precision. Oh, sure. They have their Hunter magazines that'll fit flush on you, but this does hang down a little bit, but immaterial. Okay. Yep. Uh, for what you're wanting to do with it and what you do actually do with it works great. Yep. So you've got a decked out rifle system custom from end to end, uh, chambered in a cartridge that is incredibly effective for what you're trying to do with it. But you can't do anything with it unless you can see what you're shooting at. So up on top, you've got Picatinny rail, rings, and an optic. Walk us through uh, that whole thought progression into how you ended up with what you got. Well, the the origin came with the with the Picatinny rail. I believe they have an option where you can get either tallies or a Picatinny rail. I might be wrong on that. I don't remember. But this one has a, a Picatinny rail on top. Um so that's how that started. And and with this stock configuration, I think these are... Lows. No, I think those are mediums. Medium, I think you're right. Medium rings. These are medium uh, Vortex slash Seekins precision matched rings. And my cheek weld is just fine. And honestly, the more you shoot in weird positions, the slam in your cheek on the stock is, is really not ideal. So as long as I get consistent weld somewhere on my face mm-hmm. where my gun is, my head is a little bit more upright i actually prefer that um so these are medium rings and then this is a vortex razor lht uh, four and a half to 22 mm-hmm. in mil okay uh, this has an xlr2 reticle for those guys that want to get that deep into it kind of um, a christmas tree style reticle very much so similar to um the, the all the ones that are in the like the gen 2 and the gen 3 razors like the the really really heavy scopes yep uh which i'm i'm used to looking through you know in yeah. competition so quick holdover should you need to do a holdover and a wind correction you've got places to do it in the reticle yeah and typically if i'm going to take a longer shot i'm not going to hold over i'm right. i'm going to dial um but for windage 
It's got two tenth windage hash marks, and that's what I prefer, and it's what I like, uh, because I I do have to hold unless I take this cap off, because this scope has capped windage, which I'm a fan of. I do. I was going to mention that. So you've got this scope. It's an ultralight scope, and some of the features on it about. 22 ounces, if yeah. I'm not mistaken. And for the feature set that we're about to talk about, you don't get that at 22 ounces or 24 ounces or 26 ounces very easily. So this is 4.5 to 22. That's a great zoom ratio for all the hunting, hunting. that you do. Uh, an exposed elevation turret with which a zero stop. Locked. Yep. Which is lockable. Right here, I cannot turn the turret. I have to physically pull up on it to get this uh, this guy to, to, to click. Yep. To, 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 to change. So you've got a lockable turret with a zero stop, and you're running uh, capped windage you prefer. So uh, walk us through why you prefer doing that. Uh, just for hunting, I I don't take that far of shots. I don't. It's just not my thing. Yeah. Um, so it, if I do need to hold a little bit of wind, I feel okay holding it rather than 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 dialing, and then it's just a one less thing that I have to worry about. Did my windage turret get bumped? You know, when I did slid down that hill, did yep. something happen? This is capped and protected. Do you think holding wind instead of dialing wind is kind of a spillover from your competition days? Yeah, but everybody dials now. Not, not most, everybody. For the most part. Yeah, it it's seems It's really weird. changed. It has. Yeah. Uh, but I w- grew up in that competition world right with you, and yeah, you dialed elevation, you held wind. And before that, you didn't dial nothing. Uh, you did holdovers, which was really weird. Yeah, I didn't do any of that, but I'm, I'm sure glad there are turrets that do what they're supposed to these days. Yep. So ultralight scope, great uh, zoom ratio. does have a parallax on this goes down all the way down to 25 meters is what they're saying mm-hmm. on, on here. And then to infinity, obviously. And it does have an illuminated reticle, oh. those low light shots. Perfect. There's a little button on the side yep. here can light that thing up which is really handy when hunting the wild challenges abound leave nothing to chance seven millimeter prc from hornady So you've got four and a half to 22. We talked about that. That's a, a big zoom ratio that you could do a lot of hunting in. Uh, it's in the first focal plane. Oh, yeah, of course. So tell me, where do you leave that magnification selector? Uh, where do you like to run if you're going to take a shot, say, inside a quarter mile? Because uh, those first focal plane reticles, reticles really small at four and a half. So tell us, uh, walk us through that. Um, I say, of course, when you said first focal plane, like, yeah. For me, that's of course, because mm-hmm. that's, you know, I do, did the competition thing for, for quite some time, and I've heard too many horror stories of guys using their reticle when they're not on max zoom on a second focal plane reticle and, and miss it. Mm-hmm. So first focal plane, if I use that reticle, it's going to be right all the time. Uh, right now, it's sitting just below 12 after my last hunt, yeah. and I probably won't change it ever. Yeah. You ever walk around with it at four and a half? No, no, no. But I do zero the this rifle at a hundred. When I do, when I do walk around, I will dial up a little bit and just leave it there. So you've got kind of a max point blank range, almost kind of dialed in a little in. bit, yeah. Because if I hit a little bit high at a hundred, so be it. Yeah, it's a hundred um, yards. But yeah, just under twelve. I grew up with a Remington Model Seven Ten and Two Seventy with a three to nine Bushnell on it that never left nine power. So I, from a very young age, I just trained my my body to point the rifle where I need to look before I even look yeah. through the scope. Well, and also, obviously, that goes into you handling the rifle, but it probably also goes into your style of hunting today. It's you're not really pounding the timber, walking through the trees, and going to shoot the first thing that jumps up. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not a fan of that. Where yeah. I rifle hunt down uh, in eastern Nebraska, mm-hmm. we used to, you know, oh, it's the last day of the hunt. Let's all go do some drives, right? Yeah, classic that, Midwestern deer drives. That's not. That's not the way I like to do it. Yeah. I like them to not even know that I'm there. Mm-hmm. You know, exactly. And then for yeah, the Western stuff, largely you're not jumping deer up I'm out of trying either. to find them from a long ways away and evaluate if i like them and if i do make, a, make stock. a play 
So you've got really a hell of a rifle set up here. You mentioned the weight. What was that again? Eight pounds so with some eight, change? 8.8 8 pounds uh, without the bipod. With the bipod and the magazine, she's 10.1 pounds. Yeah, and that's suppressor sling dressed up, Everything. ready to go. And again, we talked about that just really briefly, but you can make a really cool rifle setup that you don't want to shoot. It can look real good on paper that you've got a seven and a half pound fill in the cartridge, but you might not want to shoot that. You might yeah. not want to train with that. You might not want to practice with that rifle like this here and kind of that mid weight type. You can take this to the range every time you go to the range and whether you're dialing in something, practicing PRS barricades or doing whatever, you can take this and just get practice with it, get reps with it. And it's not beating you up. Yep. The recoil is manageable, especially with that ultra five. I mean, I, I, when, after you shoot a match with your race gun and then shoot this, you you definitely have to be more mindful of, of recoil management and making sure that you purposely, you know, try to get that rifle to recoil straight back so that you can see what's going on. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, like you said, it's not unmanageable. Right. And honestly, this is something we could talk about too. Like th this is all very, very nice stuff. When you start going to get those extra few ounces, the price of things goes up immensely. Sure it does. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So this certainly not a budget setup, but um, you could, yeah, if you're starting to really start to skeletonize things or go hyper Titanium. light, yeah, yeah, you can make things real expensive in a darn hurry. Yep. Um, but this is a great setup. Very, very utilitarian, especially for, you know, the, the Golden West and the, the prairie uh, where we live. And then anywhere else really in the country whether you're shooting in a bean field or you're shooting in a giant you know canyon in the sand hills this is effective yep i'm i'm really happy with this one this is this is a, a one that i enjoy grabbing out of the safe when when it's time for it to work awesome well i've got nothing more to ask on this rifle it's really well done i appreciate you giving us the insight of what things are and not just what they are but why they are sure. the way they are and for the listener, if they're looking to build an awesome 6.5 PRC, they might uh, carbon copy this thing. You'd end up with a really nice system. Yeah. We, we've talked about the 18-inch the barrel before, and people are always curious and yeah. wanting to build 18-inch 6.5 PRCs and 20-inch 6.5 PRCs. And I'd say... Go ahead and do it. Absolutely. It's just, it's a Creedmoor, essentially, with a short, short barrel that's very manageable, you know, rifle. Yep. It really is, yeah. So you're getting... 24 or 26 inch 6.5 Creedmoor velocity, but you're getting it from an 18 or a 20 inch barrel, which is lighter, easier to handle. When you put your suppressor on there, it's not getting incredibly yep. long. You're not having to duck quite so far when you go under trees. And mm -hmm. it's just an easier, more packable platform to have around. And, and the animal doesn't know the difference either way. And you just have to be mindful of your external ballistics, which is science. It's, there's no reason to guess. You can, know your velocity you can know your impact you can know your wind deflection you can know your impact velocity and your impact energy as well uh it's 2024 those tools are literally at your fingertips They're using free. a free app on your phone hornady ford off among many others yeah so no excuse there awesome platform preston anything else you want to leave the listener with on your ultimate kind of 6.5 prc uh not on this but i will say that if you guys like this one there's more. We can do more. We can do like a lot a, more. Judd's budget, uh, Ruger American build. I would say build. You know yeah. that's that's a good rifle. Custom. Absolutely. And we saw the comment. We want. They want to see Miles's race gun. Okay. Uh, it's not what you think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, you might be. It's it's interesting. But uh, yeah, we can go through them if you like them. Just all you got to do is watch this. Hit the like button. Maybe leave a comment. Yep. Perfect. Awesome. Well, again, thanks, Preston. Hopefully, you can get this thing out in the fall. I hope so too, Ben. Everybody out there, hopefully you enjoyed this episode walking through Preston's ultimate 6.5 PRC. Like he mentioned, you have to let us know what you want to hear more of. You want to see Miles' race gun. You want to see Jaden's race gun. You want to see Judd's uh, 6.5 Creedmoor. Whatever it may be, like, comment, subscribe, etc. But also reach out to us, uh, podcast at hornady.com. We want to put out content that you want to watch so let us know specifically which guest and what kind of rifle you want to see of theirs thanks for watching we'll catch you on the next one